The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Those who think they're the equal of their parents are very unlikely to accept the authority of God. And we live in an age of radical egalitarianism. There's no God over me, there's no parent over me, there's no teacher over me, there's no policeman over me, there's no one over me. I am God. Many people today think the Bible is outdated, irrelevant, and irrational. Next, Dennis Prager uses reason to demonstrate the opposite. Betty and I welcome you to Life Today. Dennis Prager is still with us now for the last program. The movie is in the theaters. I hope in every one of them. God, I pray Mm -hmm. you get it in every theater. Whatever you have to do, do it. Mm -hmm. By the way, God uses people. And this is important, very important. The book, the movie is No Safe Spaces. Can I say this real quick? Because I I wanted to. I wanted to let you know that I'm, I'm sure you hear this all the time. I listen to you on the radio, so I feel like I've already met you because you are so personable. And I look forward when I get a chance to hear it. Is it Wednesdays when you talk about the family or in relationships and stuff? I think that's so, so important. Thank you. And a lot of times when I'm pulling in the garage, I'll get out of the car when I'm just listening to you all ran and James, you got to hear what Prager said today. It was so good. Thank you. That's very, I didn't know. Thank you. Yeah, it's great. People say that a lot when they meet me. They say, I feel like I know you. And I always have responded, you do. And it's hard for people to believe because so many public figures aren't real. And I understand people are cynical and skeptical. (laughs) And people who work with me tell me the first thing that they say if they say they work with me is, well, what is he like? And then they, so I always then say, what do you say to them? Said, I say, he's exactly what you hear. <laughs> That's him. Yeah, That's true. And, I'm and I, I, don't, um, I don't find that difficult. I, maybe because I've been blessed with being at peace with myself. And I, I'm, I have unbelievably corny desires that they're so corny that I don't think, I almost feel funny always saying, I just want to do good. I got one life. And I know I have gifts. I knew that as a very, you know how I knew, by the way, you'll get a kick. How do you know you have a gift? Because it's true. How do you know? Because uh, whatever you have, you think everybody else can do. That's until you realize, well, not everybody else can do it. My father was an accountant, and he had an office in the house as well as in Manhattan. I grew up in Brooklyn. So on Sundays, clients would come to the house who couldn't go to Manhattan during the week. And a lot of them would come an hour early to talk to me. And I, was, I was in high school. I was 14, 15, 16. So I, I kept thinking, why do these 50-year-old guys come early to talk? I'm 15. <laughs> so I finally said to one guy, I said, I'm just curious. Why do you come an hour early to talk to me? I'm in high school. And he goes, because you're really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the first time I thought, hey, am I interesting? <laughs> that's, it was such a fascinating thing. I mean, I interested me. <laughs> and, and I get bored very quickly. So, they, <laughs> but it's, so it's a fascinating thing when you, 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 you know, how do you know you're interesting? If you're in solitary confinement, you don't know you're interesting. Or you're, you know, you're on a desert island. It's only if people start actually reacting. But anyway, I just, uh, it's okay. I'm sure you don't care anymore about my father's clients. Well, what'd you come here to the show for? I'm trying to tell you about my father's clients, you know. All right, No Safe Places, the movie is in the theater. No Safe Spaces. I just want people to be aware. Yeah, Yeah. No Safe Spaces. Right, Spaces, spaces. yeah. All right, here we go. (laughs) This is the reason we want to talk on the show about this incredible, there's two volumes and more to come of the Bible, the Genesis and then here is Exodus. The Rational Bible. Absolutely beautiful. The Rational Bible and that it is. But it's coming from a person who is very rational and very wise but knows the, the Hebrew, understands the language. You said, uh, you know, if preachers read it and don't get 100 sermons, you give them their money back. And I think you probably mean it, but I think they get hundreds of sermons yes, it's meant because to. the wisdom is so great and the, the Bible is so true. How important is it 
for us in, a, in America and wherever freedom is to get back to the basics of the Bible. And then let's talk some about the Ten Commandments in specific. But how important is it? Well, if people don't have wisdom, they, they have confused knowledge with wisdom. But the, the, uh, the Internet has knowledge, but it has no wisdom. If you, you look up something, you will, you know, what is the capital of Mongolia? Okay, Ulaanbaatar. Okay, is that wisdom? No, that's knowledge. <laughs> That's what you get on, 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 the, on the internet, and, and it's good for that. I, I use it all the time. But there's no, th there's no wisdom today, and uh, this, is, this was the... There were a few moments in my life that changed my life. This one happened when I was at graduate school at Columbia, and I, I realized I was being taught by, by very bright people who uh, I thought were foolish. I thought then were foolish, because I knew men and women were basically different, but I was being taught they're basically the same. I knew that America was morally superior to the Soviet Union, yet my field of study, which was Soviet studies, Soviet Union was not morally inferior to the United States. That's why when Ronald Reagan said that the Soviet Union was an evil empire, he was blasted by every major newspaper in the United States. Yeah. How yeah. dare you make such a... But I, and I thought, th these people are sick. <laughs> if the Soviet Union is not an evil empire, then neither the word evil nor the word empire has any meaning. Yeah, that's so good. Sure. So uh, I, I, I was going crazy, sort of, at, at graduate school. Uh, be, being taught nonsense at, a, at, a, at, a, at an Ivy League university. Then I, 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 I truly, I give you my word, as God is my witness, I, and, and, I, and I told people at the time, so I have witnesses from then. All of a sudden, walking on the Columbia campus, 116th Street and Broadway in Manhattan, all of a sudden, for the first time since third grade, a Hebrew verse came to my brain. I had not said it since third grade, because it was something we said every morning, in, in our prayers was, was certain biblical phrases. And it was, I'll just say it in Hebrew, because that's how it came to my brain. Reshit chokhmah yirat Adonai. The begin, wisdom begins with the fear of God. And I realized, oh, that's the answer. There's no wisdom at Columbia, because there's no God at Columbia. Mm. And I came to realize the secular world produces knowledge, but no wisdom. And, and, and I believe that. I believe that to this day. Yes, I didn't just believe it then. Totally agree. They, uh, it's, it's, how could you produce wisdom if the world is pointless, and if there's no God, the world is pointless? How could pointless have wisdom? It, it, it's, it's an oxymoron. It's not possible. So this was revelatory to me, of course. And now I realize it's not just God. God is not enough. If you don't know what God says... If God is essentially irrelevant, then God could be anything you want God to be. That's why I never, somebody says they believe in God, I have no idea what they believe, none. I always ask them, and just out of curiosity, what did this God reveal? <laughs> that's, that's the key. Yeah. And if they just say, it's, and not, now my criterion isn't even the whole Bible, just say the Ten Commandments and I'm happy. If you believe in the God who revealed the Ten Commandments, we believe in the same God. Why do that, you, is, that is my criterion. What do you believe is one of the most important ones? Because it well, surprises some yes. people. Yes. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I have gone through All a lot of, of incarnations <laughs> on this one. <laughs> uh, I used to say do not steal because uh, the, uh, all, of the, uh, all of the commandments between, uh, that, that pertain to man and man, uh, murder, stealing, uh, false witness, adultery, and coveting all involve stealing. Adultery is stealing a person's spouse. Uh, murder is stealing a person's life. Uh, false witness is stealing justice. So I said stealing for a while. Now I say to my great shock, I never would have predicted this, honor your father and mother. Now, listen, this is fascinating stuff. So there are two tablets of the Ten Commandments, five and five. The second five are all laws between man and man. The first five are between man and God, with one exception. Honor your father and mother. Honor your father and mother should be on the second tablet, because your parents are human beings. It shows how important God thinks honoring parents are, that they're on the side of the commandments vis-a-vis -vis God himself. Wow. And there's a reason. The way in which most people will be able to acknowledge God's hierarchy is by acknowledging their parents' hierarchy. 
you do it by steps. Those who think they're the equal of their parents are very unlikely to accept the authority of God. And we live in an age of radical egalitarianism. There's no God over me. There's no parent over me. There's no teacher over me. There's no policeman over me. There's no one over me. I am God. And that is, I asked my father, I used to interview him on my radio show his, on his birthday, July 18th every year. Died at 96 and he was eloquent till 96. So I said, uh, Dad, what is the biggest difference in America today from when you grew up? And he said, oh, and he was very glib, my father. And he said, I'll tell you immediately, uh, kids run the house. <laughs> that was his biggest difference. It was very insightful on my father's part. In my house, my parents ran the house. There was authority. There was authority. There was a breakdown of the concept of authority. Teachers come in, hey, call, call me uh, Marty. I, didn't, I never called my teacher Marty. I didn't know one teacher's, I didn't know one adult's first name. Adults were adults, that's another one, adults and kids. Why does the left want 16 year olds to get votes? Because they don't see any difference between themselves and a 16 year old. Let me, let me ask you this because I felt so strongly about it and I passed it by you just briefly that in the Old Testament, the serious punishment for breaking certain commandments, the most serious death, you would understand that about some. Murder, you could even see the immoral problems in the separation. But the serious penalty on not honoring your parents. And I passed by you that I felt like God showed me that the greater penalties on sins were the ones that were more likely to keep you a prisoner, keep you captive, hold you in bondage to that practice, and very difficult for you to break free to repent of. And so the severity of the punishment was equal to the difficulty of breaking free from that. And you nodded at me when I said right. it. Right. There, there are a lot of reasons. First of all, the severity of the punishment is there overwhelmingly, except in the case of murder, to tell you the severity of the sin. People were not generally executed for these things. But I wanna, I'll give you another example of, of why I believe what I'm doing is important on the Bible. It says if you have a rebellious child that you take him to the court and they, they, can, they can execute him. And people use that as an example of how primitive the Bible is. You believe in this stuff, you can, you, you, you're gonna stone rebellious kids, there'll be nobody left on earth. <laughs> this, is a common, this is a common argument. But I realize something, and I, I, know, I know what I'm saying is intellectually honest. This was one of the great moral achievements of the Bible. That law, for the first time in human history, took the right to kill a child away from parents. Nobody understands it that way, but that is exactly how it should be understood. Wow. That law says, you want to kill your kid? You can't. Oh, a court can, mm -hmm. but no court in Jewish history ever killed a kid. <laughs> That's powerful. It abolished killing kids mm -hmm. while preserving parental authority. And what has the nation of America done when it went against the word of God and the knowledge of God well, to chaos, the innocent kids, what, what, what's happened to them? They've killed their kids in the womb. Oh, oh, that, well, it's, it's, it's now out of the womb. Yeah. The, the governor, or was it North exactly Carolina or, 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 or Virginia, whichever it was? I mean, it was just, it's astonishing. <laughs> the, the, they'll decide after the child is born. That's called infanticide. That, they, they can't claim that that any longer. Or th this is why my, my wife has a brilliant view of this. She said, forget the passing laws. Ch pass this law that anyone who goes for an abortion must be apprised of what they're aborting. That's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just given you in, in many states, mm -hmm. you there is a law. I was just in Colorado. Everything, every menu tells you the calories. Yeah. I agree with yeah. that. Yeah. And I don't like, I like a, a gen yeah. generally, yeah. I don't like oh, government yeah. intervention. Yeah. But I think yeah. I think information is yeah. important. Because you actually would like to know. Show yeah. the woman what it is she is I'm aborting. Sorry. Sorry. That's it. That would be better than any banning right now in terms of turning people around. The only way we're going to really protect innocent life is to show everyone the value and preciousness and potential of every life. But they don't, they don't even have an unborn life. Forget, forget. 
I have asked since I was 25 and started lecturing. I've asked high school students, and I still ask them, and I get the same answers, except now their grandparents say the same thing. Who would you say first, your dog or a stranger, if both were drowning? One third, since I started 45 years ago, one third the dog, one third the stranger, one third doesn't know. Two thirds of Americans would not save a human being before their dog. Why? I love my dog, I don't love the stranger. And I explained to religious people as well. By the way, I asked kids in Jewish and Christian schools, a lot of them would save their dog. Mm. That's what I'm saying, we're not teaching religion properly. No. I did it with a Christian class at the, at the, uh, the, the Nixon Library, and to the teacher's cr credit, they were shocked at how many kids said their dog. I did it at a Jewish school in Miami, the same thing, the rabbis were shocked at how many kids voted for their dog. Mm. We're not teaching the basics uh, that human life is sacred, animal life is not. That means you, you can't hurt an animal. Animal rights are, are in the Ten Commandments. Your animal has to rest on the Sabbath. I, I totally believe that we owe, owe animals uh, ethical rights, but humans are more valuable. And what you're trying to, I think, help everybody see is we're in, we're really close to the edge of losing. We are. The we're, that's that we right. Enjoy. We are. Because this is a, it's a miracle that this country exists as this long as it does. This next year, most important election in my 76 years that I've been on this earth. Do you believe it's that important? I think it's the second most important. I think the last one was. Mm -hmm. ha, ha, the, the, everything, it would be academic. If the left had won now and made more mm -hmm. Supreme Court appointments mm -hmm. and more judges that's and more point, laws, yeah. I, 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 think, okay, so you I call, think it's the second Is it a important. miracle the way it turned out, really? Would it be an answer to well, serious people's I prayers? Can't, I'm not God's spokesman. I don't know when he intervenes and doesn't, but from a human perspective, it seems to be pretty miraculous. <laughs> I, I fully okay, agree. Okay. Uh, well, we need another I, I miracle. I've got to say, well, well we, we don't. what we got to do is work hard. I, uh, there's a very famous Hebrew saying, don't rely on miracle. miracles. You, can't, you are not allowed to rely on miracles. But we can God become a miracle by our actions, That is we? correct. That's it. Yes, that is right. So You're going to teach me how to think before we get through this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's... Let, no, uh, let me just say you're, this. You're, you're pretty good I, at I thinking. I want to tell you something. Do yeah. you realize that I will have some people send me long letters telling me, how could you spend time on Christian television talking to a Jew? Why didn't you just talk to him the whole time about Jesus? Because I was trying to show him Jesus. I was trying to show him the love of God. He saw it from the moment he walked in. I saw it in him. I saw the Father's love all over him. This man loves you and your children and your families more than most people who are sitting in churches, Christian churches every week, love their neighbor. This I, man loves I might his add, for, for those listeners who write that, I might add, and this is my one boast of, of all my appearances on your show, I believe that I have brought more Christians back to their church than almost any living Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you, Father. I mean that. I mean that sincerely. I, I know that. I, I, want I you do. To know. And and I oh, whenever they call my show, you know, Dennis, it's really something. I can't believe it. That you're a Jew and you got me back to my Baptist church or my Lutheran church or my Presbyterian That's church. Right. And I always tell them, just tell everybody it was a Jew who did. But I got I got I got my. You love this is my. I know you don't have a lot. You, this is my favorite it's story. Your time frame. I'm on, on Jew on Jew Christian. You will love this. So I, I was talking to a thousand people in Southern California, Gura Hills. There were five about five hundred Jews, five hundred Christians, and. Uh, question and answer period, people lined up at the microphone. A woman gets up at the microphone, she goes, Dennis, I want you to know I'm a Christian. You are my favorite Jew. <laughs> and I said, no, your second favorite Jew. That's great. That's great. And we know who the favorite is. Yes, that's right. Uh, I love you, Dennis Prager. <laughs> now, no safe uh, spacers. spacers. That's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the movie space, yeah. and the book. Yeah. The movie and the book. But yeah. the movie, please, please, please see the yes. movie. Please. We have to fight. And here's the commentary. And Dennis, I, I hope we stay very, very we close. We will. We certainly and will. And that we can see something very profound happen. That's I can't meaningful. believe she's a great grandmother. I, I think she's a great I, grandmother. I'm sitting here the whole time thinking something is awry. <laughs> Did she really get sick? Uh, Listen, she looked like a great grandmother. 
doesn't even look like a grandmother. <laughs> she really gets ticked off. Of yeah, I do. Take real good care. It's wearing me out. <laughs> Here's the, somebody said, James, you're 75 now. Are you on assisted living? I said, I was on assisted living the moment I got married. <laughs> Been on over 50 years. Who says are you in assisted living? That is, that is terrible. <laughs> because I'm so old, you know, I'm 75. Oh, but here, I, I tell people when I have my birthday, and then she really gets upset when I say, and one month later, Betty will be the same age. She says, why do you have to tell them that? Because nobody I wants to believe you. I agree with you. I'm not sure exactly. Yeah. All right. Listen, Dennis, thank you. And uh, I just thank hope you. everybody sees you. the movie, gets your books, get the Bible commentary. We are doing our best to get God's arms of love around people that need to be set free from sexual trafficking. You and we've had a are. tremendous effect. Matter of fact, the whole thing started when a Hollywood actor... And actors, no, really, the serve the actors and actresses sold a seven-carat diamond ring, left supplying all the power for various shoots in Hollywood, and went over to Thailand and started renting property. They watched us on television, got a burden for missions. They've never come back. Built the biggest, most beautiful rescue center in the world. You did, helping them. Thank God. But that's how it started. Well, what Dennis is trying to do is inspire that kind of love on the part of all of us who we care. And I believe he's effective. I want you to look and see what happens when we reach out to those who've been trafficked and feed that outreach that became so great that was birthed in these people from Hollywood, believe it or not. And now it's been supported by Christians. Watch closely. You're going to be moved by what you see right now. And you can be the miracle in someone's life. Watch. Who's your, who's your best friend? I mean, my pet died just not the aunt Jay room, but what the woman crap on. What me and home? Move it up to a car, you know? She said, no, nobody. Do you have anyone that you trust? Me and No. I mean, some of these are like, 14, 15 year old girls, and they wake up beside some 50, 60 year old man, and they're held for weeks and months. Do you remember that first night? Do you remember what that felt like? I pin you out of time. You and I, as God's sons and daughters, we've got to be the ones telling these girls, you have a future and you have a purpose and you have a hope and there is a God who loves you. And there are people on this planet who know this God and want to share this love with you. You are not worthless. You are not worth ten dollars every time a man comes through the door if we don't help nobody's going to help betty when you see that just tell me what you want our viewers to to think and and how you pray they respond i hope you will dig deep down in your heart and say, God, what can I do to help these precious little ones? And they are little ones. They're being taken horrible advantage of. They're being beaten. They ring drugs. They're being just treated so badly if they don't obey what they tell them to do. And they don't know if they'll ever get out of there. But they're little children crying out in their hearts, somebody, please hear my cry. I need some help. Please, won't you join with us? And let's reach out and be that hope that they're looking for. I'm praying that this last week now, when we have this particular rescue life emphasis, that you'll help us. We need to hear from every one of you. And we need a miracle. We have a miracle that started this particular emphasis. When some of our friends said, we'll put up a challenge gift of $320,000 to match what people give, which means your gift can be doubled. The average amount it takes to start the rescue process is $128 to reach one. 
but now it'll be two if you can make that gift. I always challenge people to see if you could rescue as many as possible. As an example, you rescue 10 with a gift of $1,280, but now you'll be rescuing 20 because it's double. Would you right now get your bank card, use it like a check? If you use a check, make it to life. That's what you're giving. But please go online or dial that number that's there as a prayer line and now a rescue line, a lifeline, and make the gift God put on your heart. We have some gifts to send you to say thank you. But you're giving these precious girls and boys the greatest gift. You're giving them life and freedom. Thank you so much for doing it. Thank you for your love and your gift. Behind the bright lights, there is a darkness where a world of innocence is lost and abuse runs rampant, scarring the souls of children with no one and nowhere to turn for help. With bodies broken and hopes crushed, these young victims are trapped in a never-ending nightmare. Today, you can shine the light of God's love in this dark world to reach, rescue, and restore these young ones to the life God designed for them to live. With a generous $320,000 matching gift, now your gift of $128 to help rescue a child can be doubled to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help rescue one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 mission rescue gift will be doubled to $64. And with your donation of any amount, we'll send you the Faith, Hope, Love tea towel set. These beautifully woven hand towels are a wonderful reminder to remain steadfast in faith, hope, and love each day. With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive the life-giving Proverbs Journal. Bound in genuine leather, this journal is filled with wisdom and daily encouragement from Proverbs, featuring lined pages for your personal notes as you reflect on godly instruction to success in life. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help rescue 20 children, and you may request our beautiful bronze sculpture, Safe in the Shepherd's Arms. This is the last week. Please call, write, or make your gift online. Well, Betty and I want to remind you, this is the last week for Rescue Life and this emphasis. We need to hear from you. Please, please do what God leads you to do. No safe spaces. I hope you'll get the book. I hope you'll see the movie and pray for Dennis Prager. Would you join Betty and me saying thanks to Dennis Prager? For all this. We're going to stay close. Okay? Oh, there's no, no question. This is the beginning. Thank you so much for watching. Thank God bless y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I was raised in a committed Christian home. We, we loved Jesus, obeyed Jesus, served Jesus, told people about Jesus, but I didn't know about the Holy Spirit. Next week. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.